lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How was your weekend? Ah, I had a good time. How about you? It was fun. Yeah? It was fun. It's a long-ass drive. It was, it's a long ways up there. It was, but it, I say it is, but I mean, I've made way longer drives, but for what we were doing, that was a long drive. <laughs> okay. Well, what we were doing was we went to the uh, Libertarian Party of Alabama's convention, state convention. All the way across the state, by the way. Yeah, at the <laughs> far end from where we started. Yep. Um, pretty much. So. And. And I had but, nothing but complaints about the ro- state of the roads. Yeah, yeah. Al- you got to do better, Alabama. I tell you, man, that's that's pitiful. Yeah, what's my tax money for? Jeez. <laughs> right? <laughs> Clearly, they're not paving the roads with it. <laughs> yeah. Not filling in holes. Uh, anyway, yeah. that's, that's, yeah. that's thought, for sure. thought I was going to break a rim on the way up there. <laughs> there, was, there. Those roads are bad in some areas. Yeah. Like, and actually, overall, it probably wasn't that bad. But there was some... The areas that are bad are bad. Yeah. I'm so. telling you that, like... On either side of Montgomery, yeah. that road construction has been going on for literally 25 years. Yeah, yeah. And it ain't no better, by the way, either. Yeah, that's, <laughs> like, that's there's true. still holes everywhere. Like, when I was driving back and forth to Atlanta for college, that yeah. road construction was going on. was going on. on, yeah. And, you know, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Long time ago. But. And, uh, yeah, still, yeah. still at it. Oh yeah, they'll get it one day. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> not I don't, hold, not yeah. holding my breath. <laughs> yeah, I don't count on it. You uh, know the the um, contracts, they, you know. Yeah, that's one thing. So uh, libertarians Just always off buddies. Well, that was <laughs> yeah. to say the libertarians always get a hard time with who's gonna who's gonna build the roads. You know, without the government. Mm-hmm. Same people that's building them right now. The government ain't building them now either. <laughs> yeah, it's all exactly. contracted out. <laughs> yeah, that's that's absolutely true. I you know, so that's such a funny question anyway. Like what I always tell people is okay, if they built your house and they didn't connect your garage to the road in front of your house, yeah. would you just be sitting there wondering how in the world you were ever gonna get from your garage to the road? Right. I mean, <laughs> like, you know, if people need to get somewhere. Yeah. They'll connect the two points. It's really not that hard. <laughs> I just don't understand why this is such a question. Uh, yeah, it's it's a tough one for a lot of people. Yeah, but. like like there were no roads before government. Yeah, and well, I mean, I guess that that's probably true. There were no roads before government, but like there were no roads until government started building them. That's yeah. the, the that's know. the question. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I suppose the Romans were like early on. The, like they, those were government roads. And, yeah, um, but like the beginnings of this country. Like the government wasn't building the roads, yeah, and there were <laughs> it was, roads. It was it was people trying to get from place to place. Yeah, um, you know all these little county roads and and so forth. They were in most cases they were co opted by the county. They were roads that were already <laughs> they were taken there. over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, well, anyway. Yeah. And I always tell people, like, roads are, like, the least amount of my worries. If we can do something with all of this government, we'll worry about roads later. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. There's plenty of people that are already making money off of building roads, and they'll continue to make money off of building roads. Absolutely. It'll just be a different person paying them. Actually, yeah. it won't be, but you'll be doing it um, <laughs> <Directly>. intentionally. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> you'll have a choice in the matter. Absolutely. Uh, anyway. But. Of course, you know, it's the same thing like schools, right? Like, do you get your money back from the government if they stop building the roads? <laughs> if I if I take my kids out of public school and put them into private school, do I get the money that I'm spending and that I'm giving them in taxes for schools? Do I get that back? No. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> and, you know, same same message that we've been sending about the, the lockdowns and the masks and the, all the other, you know, liberties that have been taken away with various excuses. Like... They never give back anything that they take away. You're just going to have to take it back. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But the convention was fun. Um, yeah. You know, I like I actually skipped a lot of the stuff that was going on that I didn't that I haven't historically skipped. But yeah, um, um, I mean, breakout sessions and things like that. Yeah, but, I don't think I attended any of that stuff. Yeah. Um, which is fine. Like I say, I was. I mean, but the 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 speakers were both really good. Spike mm. Cohen and um, John Mons were both very very compelling. Yeah, <laughs> lot they, of, they were stealing our bit. Though. I was fixing to say that <laughs> lot a lot of a lot of messaging that sounded a real familiar there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to so. episode eighty of the Liberty Mike. Yeah. I think it was eighty. Whatever the last episode was. Yeah, yeah, a lot, um, lot of the same message. But I was excited yeah. to hear it. Like I, at least maybe that it's an idea that's catching up. 
own. Yeah, this is a know? slightly different perspective. They were, they both talked a lot about local, like, you know, trying to make a difference locally. Yeah, yeah. And um, and that's a yeah, that's a good that's a good message. We're on board with that. Oh, absolutely. Self government. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. So. Um. Yeah. So John Mons was good. Um. I didn't get a chance to speak to him uh, separately, unfortunately. I, I, I wanted to, um, but I didn't get the opportunity. So we didn't set up that interview, by the way. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In yep. fact, we didn't set up any interviews this weekend, but um, we do. We did get contact for uh, to maybe set one up in the future. Yeah. And then there was somebody that we should have interviewed but didn't want we'll to talk to him separately too. Yeah, I, that was kind of an afterthought to to even approach him about sitting down with us. But yeah. I think that could have been a really fun conversation yeah, had we I'm had sure done it. Was, it. Well, I was like talking to him. So well, exactly. So, yeah. so I think it would he would, he'd be a fun one to have on the podcast at some point. Yeah, we'll have to work it out sometime. We could maybe yeah. go where where the hell is He's Madison County, right? No, Macon. Oh, is it Macon? Yeah. Okay. No, I don't know where that's at. I don't really either. I have to figure <laughs> it out. Yeah. A lot of counties in Alabama. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, the the whole thing. It seemed like a successful weekend. It was well set up. We got we got to throw axes too. Yeah, throwing axes was fun. Yeah. <laughs> when we finally got, we were allowed to go throw them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we we had to be intransigent about not wearing a mask. Yeah. Um and. They said, well, that's $75 that we're turning away if we don't let them in without <laughs> Yeah, but masks. I was, I'm just uh, saying that like from the outset, though, he was trying to sell us a mask. Oh, yeah. That was, I was like, yeah, I'm not buying, <laughs> especially after I looked over his shoulder and like no one out there is wearing masks. Yeah. And, he, and when I did it, when I looked over. I did, over, too. I did yeah, well, was, when we did, like, he came back and was like, yeah, I got to go say something to them. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, right. Sure dude. Do, buddy. Come on, buddy. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so. yeah, it's not that it's not that interesting to us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we got whiskey to drink back at the hotel. We'll, we'll yeah. take care of that. And throwing um, axes is fun, but what I've been telling everybody is, yeah, that's fun, but shooting guns is funner. Yeah. <laughs> like, I have more fun shooting guns. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and of course, the highlight of the weekend was uh, when um, the Liberty Mike podcast won the Atticus Finch Award for Excellence in Communication from the LPA. Yes, that was, that was, that was cool. That was a, I thought that was a big honor. I really got a kick out of it. Yeah, I, you know, I don't, I don't know that there's really that high a bar to be the best libertarian <laughs> podcast in Alabama. Um, <laughs> yeah, but to, to be recognized for our work was, but was, yeah, no, was I, nice. I, I appreciate, I, I really appreciate the recognition and the commendation. Yeah, so, absolutely. I mean, at least it makes me feel like we're, you know, that we're doing something that is having at least something of an impact. Absolutely. Um, or at least that we're doing it well, even if it's not having an impact. <laughs> <laughs> well, like I say, it was it was uh, nice to to get that. Though I, I really enjoyed that. Yeah. So. Yeah, I wish I'd uh, I wish I'd have taken it seriously when I found out that we got nominated and considered the possibility that we might actually win uh, <laughs> right. an award and been a little bit more prepared. Yeah. Um, like yeah. I didn't even plug the podcast. I know not everybody <laughs> in that room listens to the podcast. Yeah. I, I could have at well. least said, you know, for those of you that aren't listening to the podcast, this is where you can find us. Uh, gosh, well, well, I'm sure they'll find us. I hope so. I hope so. They, you know, maybe they follow the uh, LPA's Facebook page. Yeah, absolutely. So, so thanks everybody involved in that. Probably primarily Anthony, I'm guessing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so Anthony, I, I know you're listening. So the, you know, thanks a lot for whatever you did to make that happen. Oh, I'm, absolutely. I'm sure it was substantial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Um, and uh, yeah, I guess that's that's all I really have to say. Yeah, like I say, it was fun. It was nice to to see Spike. Yeah, you know, I, um, it was nice to get to talk to him later. Yeah, um, yeah, we spent a while talking to him after you know, like, at, down at the bar actually. Yeah, that evening after he spoke. Mm -hmm. Um, and I I like that guy a lot. Like I was a little iffy on him during the campaign, mm -hmm. um, mainly because I just didn't hear a lot out of him. Yeah, but dude, that guy's awesome. Like yeah. he's he's definitely he's definitely a principled libertarian, mm -hmm. and um and I, I like I say I I hope he does big things. Yeah, so. yeah he he knows how to deliver the message. I, I it's unfortunate that he had to play second fiddle. Yeah, and uh, yeah. you know, or at least play second fiddle to Joe Jorgensen. Yeah. Um. I mean, I think that there are are people that we could have nominated for president that he, it would have been just fine for him to be playing second fiddle. Well, um, because he would have been 
let loose to say what he had to say. And I, and do, I, I don't think that that was really true with Joe. That, that wasn't the case. And, and he kind of brought up when we were <clears> talking to him something that the big thing that he felt like they missed out on the campaign was that they didn't come out with a strong unified message yeah. on like one or two things. Right. And um, like a real central, message. like a real central message. Mm-hmm. And, um, and they needed that. Yeah. Like, and it was right laying right in front of them with the <laughs> lockdowns and the mask orders and all like, it was yeah. right there. Like, yeah. I mean, all you had to do is pick it up and run with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it was a shame that that didn't happen, but, but at least it, even, like I say, even he recognized that that was the problem. Mm-hmm. Like, and, and it's good to hear that he, that he understood that, you know, um, the other uh, interesting thing was Portia Shepard. Yes. Right? Um, so I didn't know her. I guess she she's become a libertarian since last year, maybe, or got involved with the party since last year or whatever. She came over from the Democrat Party, right? Yes. That what she said? That's my understanding. Yeah. Um, and I, I think that she's in like the the region just north of us. Yeah. Um, but uh, I I don't know anything. I'm going to go ahead and plug her thing. Um, on here, I haven't actually listened to an episode yet, so but I, I st- intend to. I started following it on. We'll plug it first. Okay. Um, she has on Facebook only. I guess. Yes. Yeah. Um, on Facebook only is uh, Portia takes on the black belt and beyond. Yep. And uh, I, you know, I don't know much about this particular program because I'm really not. I I literally log into Facebook to upload <laughs> the podcast, and that's that's yeah. really or to yeah to post the podcast and that's, that's really it. Um, but, uh, she was, so she had a one minute speech to, for a, um, executive committee position. And I don't know how many people in the room already knew her, but, um, I I certainly didn't. Nobody at my table knew her before. Yeah. I was going to say none of us did. Yeah. And, um, and I think that we all voted for her. We all, the whole table. (laughs) Yeah. She won our whole table over to say the least. She had a minute to talk and she, yeah, none of us knew her and we all, yeah, Yeah. we all voted for her. And there were two other people running for that position. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I followed One of whom I did know. (laughs) (laughs) So I did look her up on Facebook and followed her page. Um, Mm -hmm. I don't think, I think she's posted one video since the convention and I hadn't had an opportunity to watch it, but I saw it pop up the other day. Um, but I look forward to watching it and kind of seeing, you Mm -hmm. know, what she's doing, what she, yeah, what she's up to, because uh, like I say, she, just like you said, that little one minute speech won me, man. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I'm I'm plugging this site unseen, but, uh, if it's anything like what she said at the convention, then she, you know, it's worth watching. Absolutely. Um, is that all the convention business? I guess that's it. Yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about it. Yeah. Um, uh, thanks a lot to the LPA and, uh, yeah, and it was a good, yeah, it was a good weekend. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, got good speakers and, uh, it seemed to run pretty smoothly. I'm sure that for the people that were actually working on it, it didn't feel that way because <laughs> that's how that goes. But, yeah. um, it seemed well, like it from the outside. Shout out to Laura because it really was a good convention yeah. and, and she did. And I know that she spearheads all of that. And mm-hmm. like I say, shout out to her cause it really was, it was, it was smooth. Well, it was unfortunately smooth... she doesn't listen to our podcast. So. Well, she may, but <laughs> like I say, I know that, I know that that's a really stressful thing to put together mm-hmm. and, um, and I've been the quite a few of these at this point and that's it this one was as smooth as you can ask for yeah when you got a bunch of libertarians yeah <laughs> so um what else do we want to talk about i don't know what you got on tap man uh well okay so i got a little thing and then we can transition to something i don't know if it's more serious but more substantial anyway all right um so I, I heard a little bit, and it was one of these advertisements that is probably put out by the World Economic Forum that's, you know, pushing the Build Back Better and, oh, build um, back better, you yeah. know, Build Back Better into socialism and, and so forth. Um, but they they had somebody in the um, in the advertisement. It's, it seemed like, I mean, it was probably scripted, but it seemed like a man on the street kind of thing yeah. um, where they said, well, you know, this is what we've gotten out of capitalism is the situation that we're in now. And, uh. um, you know, that's what happens. And, and I, I stopped and I was like, I was thinking about this and I, you know, they were saying, oh, you know, with the, the huge disparity between the rich and the poor and so on. Yeah. And I, I thought like the only way that you can, make this a convincing argument is two people that don't know anything about history. Yeah. Like literally think that history started 50 years ago or something. Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, um, I didn't bring in any water and I'm like, Oh, well, <laughs> um, <laughs> that, uh, if you look at the history of political and economic system of political economic systems, yeah. All right. 
Like this is as good as it's ever been. Yeah. Like there's no perfect system. No. Um, but I would say that if you if you do it comparatively, that there are like a lesser percentage of there's winners and losers in every system. Oh, period. Like yeah. there's just no way you, around. You can't it. There's winners stop and that, losers yeah. in every system. Yeah. And I would say that as a percentage of the population, the losers in uh, free market capitalism, which we don't have exactly, but yeah. you know, um, even in a, a republic with capitalism as the the primary economic system, you know, market capitalism and in yeah. a in a republic, um, that there the losers are a smaller percentage of the population than probably any system that came before. Yeah, um, and that there's huge disparities between the rich and the poor. But that's also true in previous systems. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, what else are you comparing it to? Like, yeah. if you're looking at communism, socialism, like, the only way that you're getting around that is, like, some kind of tribal communism. Yeah. Like, literally a small-scale society of, of that is essentially communist, right? Like, it's a group yeah. decision-making. There are still leaders in these things, but group decision-making and everything's kind of shared because everybody's dependent on everybody else. Yeah. And that's the only time I can think of that you have you don't have a big disparity between the rich and the poor. Like if you look at feudalism, you know, various types of monarchies, and that's that's pretty much everything else that's been. Yeah. Right? <laughs> um the then you have a smaller percentage of the population that's the winners and a much greater percentage of the population that's the losers. And there's not really much in between until you bring in mercantilism somewhere along the way. Yeah. Um and uh but the, the difference between them is, is is huge. Yeah. And the difference between the rich and the poor is huge now, but the poor are in way better position financially <laughs> than the poor in any other society, yeah. including socialism and communism, at least as well, at least as how it's been so far. Yeah. Like even those, I mean, I, I wrote uh, quite extensively about foraging cultures when I was in school. Yeah. Um, Cause I found it really interesting. Um, and there are things that are advantageous about it, or at least that seem advantageous now. Yeah. Um, in that, like, for most small scale foraging cultures, the average person worked like roughly 25 hours a week yeah. to get everything that they needed. Yeah. Um, but it's subsistence level. Yeah. It's, it, you know, yeah. it's not. <laughs> Um, but yeah. that, I mean, that included travel time and, and, you know, food preparation and everything else. It was about 25 hours a week and the West rest was free time to, but essentially all you had to do was socialize, tell yeah. stories, play music, watch the kids, learn from each other. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> um, it's, you certainly weren't watching Netflix. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so the, the actual level of wealth for them is way low. Like I wouldn't trade for that. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it's nice to think of, you know, that agriculture brought in a whole much higher workload. Yeah. Um, you know, cause the average like agricultural society, like just out of the foraging societies, yeah. people worked way harder and spent much more time to reach that subsistence level, but you could yeah. support a much larger population. But yeah, as, um, as you have more people, you've got more. Yeah. yeah. And then as people specialized, it freed people up to do other things. Yeah. Um, and and it's that that led to this eventually, to where we are now. Yeah. And comparatively speaking, in terms of wealth, like material wealth and um, opportunities and so forth, nothing else compares. Yeah. yeah. Nothing else compares. And you can talk about everybody being, like, and the difference between the rich and the poor being less in socialism in an ideal world, but all the socialist countries that have existed, that is absolutely that's, not yeah, true. That's just not the way it's played <laughs> out in reality, you know? Mm. And it's, it's, it is crazy that, like, so the capitalism as we have it now is, like, is, is the best way to go. Just think if we turn capitalism loose mm. even more. Because that's kind of what we want. Yeah. Like is is like a, a radical version of capitalism. <laughs> yeah. Well, a radical version of free market. Anyway. Free market. Well, that's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, and the closest and people say, well, where's your example of this working? And I would say the best example um, is early U.S. history. Yeah. Um, I mean, there have been periods of time that have been essentially un, like truly unfettered capitalism. Yeah. And you can complain all you want about the, the robber barons of um, the late 19th, early 20th centuries. Yeah. But those people are, I mean, you're talking about the, the time between the Civil War and World War One, 
was the greatest creation of wealth in the history of the world. Which, by the way, we're on the back of right now. Yeah, like, yeah, like we're still we, riding that wave. We're riding that wave, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's it, it, you take out that time period, we're mm-hmm. not what we are right now. Yeah, you and know? the truth is that those those robber barons, they became incredibly wealthy, but they became incredibly wealthy by providing something that nobody else was providing, yeah. and nobody else had provided before. They, they provided something. And took something. on they huge innovated. risk to do it. Oh, yeah, absolutely, that too. Like, and they innovated to such a great degree, and they brought the level, the the average um, uh, wealth level of, you know, or so they brought the living standards of the average person in America up by a tremendous, tremendous degree. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, and uh, like you talk about, um, you know, uh, the steel industry, um, they ended up, and uh, oil and gas also. I mean, both of those things, they ended up, the products that they were producing were a higher quality and were sold for pennies on the dollar yeah. of what it had been before. I mean, the, um, the price of steel, um, dropped to like three or 4% of what it had been before, uh, us steel, like took over the market. And yeah. that's what made it possible to build up all these cities, all these high rises and so forth. Oh, like yeah. that couldn't have been done without steel yeah. and it couldn't have been done without cheap steel. Yeah. And it was cheap, high quality steel. <laughs> right. <laughs> <clears throat> and the and the same thing, you know, uh, the development of kerosene and um, and those kind of oil based lamps. I mean, people were working on whale oil before then. Yeah. And um, I, I mean, it's just yeah. <laughs> I, there's no reason to go into that in a whole lot of depth. I certainly didn't intend to. But yeah. um, I mean, that is the kind of what that unfettered capitalism did is it raised the standard of living of the average American by probably 10, 12 times. Yeah. Um, and they may, there may have been a huge difference between, you know, a, Andrew Carnegie and your average man in terms of wealth, yeah. but your average man, that's your probably average roughly man was better off though, because of him. Yeah. And that's probably roughly the difference between your average man in the U S at that time and your average person in a foraging culture, you know, a hundred <laughs> years before. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, don't knock capitalism so much. Nobody's claiming it's the perfect system, yeah. um, but it's the it's certainly the best thing that's come around. Yeah, and it's better for the most people. You you talk about the most good for the greatest number. That's well, it so far. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's mm-hmm. not about which system. Uh, the, uh, every system has flaws. Nothing is perfect. Mm-hmm. But you have to consider what the most people are going to benefit from. Yeah. And everything we've done, really, I guess, since before World mm-hmm. War Two, has like done is is worked to work against that and and really kind of bring bring things down yeah well they're they're they've instituted a lot more central control of the economy yeah which is never a good thing which leads down bad roads (laughs) yeah central control is never good yeah this is this is what we found (laughs) nobody has enough information to direct it from the middle yeah um so the other thing i wanted to talk about is that is how glad I am that the adults are back in the room in the White House. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, Lord. Because, you know, finally we have, um, a, a you know, a presidential regime that is a bunch of adults. We've had to deal with four years of screaming children. And, and now we've got Biden yeah. and, and his whole group of people. And they're, they're doing so much better a job in foreign policy. I mean... My favorite bit so yeah. far um, was uh, when Biden agreed during the Stephanopoulos interview uh, that Vladimir Putin is a killer. Yeah. And right. then um, he went on to tell a little anecdote about how he had told Putin in person that he has no soul um, several years ago when he was uh, vice president. Yeah. And like, I mean, it, you know, like is. I joke about this, like it, it is probably on the first page of diplomacy for dummies yeah. or, um, you know, d- tips and tricks of diplomacy or whatever that you don't call your counterpart a soulless killer. Right. But this is maybe <laughs> not a great idea. This is not one of the suggestions that they give. And it, it is kind of crazy <laughs> that this is all coming from Biden, who's supposed to be the the one that the supposedly at least the one that's supposed to have more tempered control over this type of thing. Mm. And, and he's out there basically for trying to be, be Mr. Badass, you know, cause yeah. that's, that's what that was. That was him yeah. trying to be like, I'm not going to be weak in front of Putin, mm-hmm. you know? And, and it's, 
it's it, it come to me it comes off as weak yeah like i mean that's whenever i heard that statement i was like oh just it it it, it, I, he's trying to come off strong mm-hmm. and it's doing the opposite. Yeah. And well, that was it, just my take. Yeah. I, and I think you're right. Um, and he, you know, in the same interview, well, it just, it seems childish. Yeah. Yeah. Like, which is weak, which yeah. to me is weak. I mean, mm-hmm. that's like, yeah, childish behavior looks weak to mm-hmm. me and because then, you it know, shows that the... you're giving in to a baser, yeah. baser thing. Yeah. So, um, and along the same lines and in the same interview, he said, well, you know, I don't know that we're going to get all our people out of Afghanistan by May 1st. And, <laughs> yeah. um, I, I oh, mean, it's there, just, there's no intention of getting our no, people out of Afghanistan. Um, well, we're going to regret it. Oh, we will. Oh, absolutely. We'll mm. regret it. Um, um, because it's only going to get hyped up even more over there once they realize, yeah, we're not leaving mm-hmm. again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we made a deal. Yeah. I mean, like it or not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Deal was made. And it's not like it can't be done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> we only got two, 2,500, 2,000, 2,500 people. Is that all that's left, left? in there? Wow. I mean, I'm pretty sure because. I mean, I don't um, know. Trump cut the troop numbers in half before he left. We only had like 4,500 there. Yeah. Then that'd be about mm-hmm. right, yeah. Um, so, but it, it, yeah, it's not going to happen. And then, of course, mm-hmm. what's going to happen is that the Taliban, which all of this time has been getting stronger, yep. um, is going to attack. Uh, if we're lucky, maybe they just attack Afghan government forces instead yeah. of attacking Americans directly. But I don't, I don't think that's I wouldn't hold happen. my breath for that, especially um, with us having such a small force there. Yeah. I imagine they'll they'll go for us directly. Mm-hmm. And it's such a stupid thing anyway, because what's preventing diplomacy between the Afghan government and Kabul and the Taliban um, is the fact that we're still there. Yeah. Because the Afghan government cannot support itself. Mm-mm. Absolutely cannot. Yeah. Taliban's been getting stronger. The Afghan government's been getting weaker. If we're not there, then they're forced to negotiate. Yeah. Oh, or yeah. be destroyed. Or, yeah. Which will maybe what ends up happening. But I mean, it's what happened to, with the Kurds, right? Remember, yeah. if we if we abandon the Kurds, they're all you know, <laughs> and yeah. all that ended up happening was we left, and they said, "Oh, I guess we better negotiate with Assad yeah. and, and make some deals." Yeah, um, and that's what happened. And so our, our support is what was preventing negotiation between the warring factions. Yeah, I heard a bit on the news last night. They were talking about all of this, and and the defense for leaving the troops there is so well. We got to make sure we don't um, let let the Taliban take back over and and let terrorism take back over the country or something yeah. like that. Um, we we've, we've got to make sure we keep a, a a force there to keep the the terrorists from taking back over. I'm like, man, here we go again, man. Yeah. Like, well, in 30 plus years ago, we were trying to urge the Taliban to take over the country. Yeah. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's crazy talk, man. Yeah. Um, I mean, along the same lines as the, uh, the Putin thing, um, then you had Blinken and Sullivan in, uh, in their talks with China last Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Um, and so how do we open up our talks that our opening statement was about how terrible China is to them <laughs> yeah. um, and, you know, how awful they are and how they need to they need to abide by the rules based order and so on and so forth. And um, and the, the response in both cases was um, essentially that, uh, sorry, U.S., you don't get to bully everybody around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so the the Chinese came back and they had a, a long opening statement in response. Yeah. Um, and they said uh, things like that the U.S. has no right to lecture China on human rights, given the killing of blacks in the U.S. By the way, I thought this was brilliant. <laughs> Very strategic. Because, yeah, because you're talking to a, a Democrat uh, diplomatic group. And so their, their narrative all this time has been how the cops are hunting down blacks in the streets and, and so forth. Yeah. So they can't dispute that statement. Right. Like, <laughs> I mean, of course, it's, it's, it's bull. It's not yeah. true. Yeah. But they can't argue against it because then they're arguing against their own narrative. Yeah, can't do that. And so I thought that that was actually like a brilliant Very response. Very clever, yeah. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and we kind of, um, we kind of, like, you know, Blinken and Sullivan, they just kind of kowtowed to it. Yeah. 
Yeah. They they didn't you know, they came back with some statement about, well, we know that we're an imperfect republic. It says so right in our constitution. In order to perform to to form a more perfect union, yeah. we know we're not perfect and we've got some things to work about on too. But yeah. you know, et cetera. And um, But what we're doing is nowhere near as bad as what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then um China made it really clear that they don't see the US as they that it was clear to them that the U.S. was trying to approach this as negotiating from a per- position of strength, yeah. and China was very clear that they don't see the U.S. as being able to negotiate from a position of power. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, and they were real clear in stating that the rest of the world may not agree that the U.S. defines the rules of the new world order. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was uh, it was pretty interesting. Like, yeah. and the you know that was all the stuff that was done in public. They say that behind closed doors, they you know they made some progress and and found some ways that they can work together and so on. Um, so you know certainly part of this was theater for their domestic audiences. Yeah. Um, so the U.S. can look like they're giving China a hard time, and the Chinese can look like they're standing up to the U.S. to their to the Chinese people, yeah. and it worked on both sides honestly. Uh, although the U.S. media has certainly been more critical than the than the Chinese media has. They were like, yeah, way to go guys. Yeah. You tell them. You <laughs> yeah. know? Um, and then, uh, you know, Putin had a, a great response as well. Although, um, <laughs> this is one of those, one of those things where it's reported differently, in different places. Yeah. Okay. Um, so most in, most often in mainstream media in the U S Putin's response, uh, was reported as being, um, when he was called a killer, uh, it takes one to know one. Yeah. Um, but my understanding from further reading, including people that, that speak some Russian, yeah. um, is that the, that he was using an idiom, um, a Russian idiom that is, is something more akin to, um, you are what you say of others. Like oh, the, yeah. you know, that you, that essentially what you're calling other people is a reflection of yourself. Yeah. So, um, anyway, that's, that probably is a more accurate representation of what he said. Yeah. Um, and because the, tr- certainly what the Russian media transcript of the, of his response s- is something like that. And he says, yeah. you know, we see in others what we expect to see because of ourselves and, and so on, yeah. um, as another part of it. So it just like reinforces kinda, the idea that yeah. the idiom was more like, yeah, you are you what are you what say, you say of you others. Are. We are. Yeah. 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 Um, but, the, but the other thing, I mean, they also, just to be fair in this also, um, they, he did add that they're happy to work with the U S this is very similar to the Chinese thing. Yeah. So we're, you know, we would be happy to work with the U S on matters of interest to Russia. Um, and when we see a benefit in working together. Yeah. So like, you're not just going to bully me into doing what you want. We'll work with you when it's adv- advantageous for us as well. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and that was, uh, that I thought was really interesting. And then finally, the very best of Putin moves. Yeah. And like you say what you will, like you got to respect this guy. Yeah. I mean, he's very clever because his, <laughs> then he said, um, that he thinks that he and Biden should discuss it further, but on the condition that it's live and yeah. public. Yeah. Oh, that's so great. So like, essentially so smart on his end. I know. So essentially he challenged Biden to a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> About a topic and, that, and, yeah, and there's the no way is, you can do it. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you have to assume that that Biden's people were like, "Oh my God, we can't let that oh, happen." Oh crap! Yeah, <laughs> you know? we may be um, over our heads here. So they just kind of ignored it. Yeah, like they, they didn't even address it. Yeah, yeah. like <laughs> it didn't even happen. Ignored it. So, yeah. oh thought, yeah, we can. Like we can't take that serious. He wants to actually sit down and talk to us. We yeah. can't do that. Like, I mean, imagine how that would go. Though. Oh man! Like uh, say what you will about Trump, um, like. You know, Trump would say some stupid stuff like I'm sure Biden would say some stupid stuff as well. Oh. But I don't think that Trump would come off weak. Yeah. And I, I think that Biden would come off weak or totally incompetent. Yeah. Well, that's really he would be completely exposed as incompetent. Yeah. I mean, and you can say what you will about Biden, you know, holding his ground in the debates with Trump. Mm-hmm. But debating Trump versus debating Putin would be a whole yeah. nother ball game because with Trump, it's Putin never much smarter. Than well, I was Trump. <laughs> to say, yeah, with with Trump, it was never an intellectual debate. Yeah. But with Putin, it will be yeah. like he's going to put you on the spot and make you think. Mm-hmm. And and Biden's not capable of that. Yeah, it does seem that way. <laughs> so. Um, and 
<laughs> like there's a part of me that really wants to see. Oh, that, I'd, that. Lo- I'd love to see it, even though it would be so sad. <laughs> yeah, it'd be devastating to my yeah. national pride. But yeah, absolutely. Like, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> but I think. I also think it would be entertaining. Yeah. And it might yeah. actually be good for the country. I mean, even though yeah. it would, it would, it would just like you say, it would hurt my national pride. Like mm-hmm. maybe we could learn something from that. Like yeah. I'm all about coming back stronger. Like, and so, I mean, this is clearly a weakness we have. Let's do something. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just unreal to me. Like, you know, the, we're doing, you know, similar kind of stuff in Iran. Um, like, Oh yeah, we'll reenter the deal, but with these extra conditions on you yeah. and, we really like the U S government has this idea that they can just go around and push everybody into doing what they want. Yeah. Yeah. And there are some, there are some countries that are saying, yeah, we're not having that anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Those days are over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're, yeah, you're not the, what did we end up calling it? Single pole. uh, I think it's monopolar as I think oh, the, yeah. what, how, like the correct term, but yeah. Um, yeah, we're not the lone superpower anymore. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in some ways you might start to wonder if we're really a superpower anymore. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely at least questionable. <laughs> yeah. When you're $30 trillion in debt yeah. and, and yeah. Uh, you shut down your economy for a year. Yeah. I don't know. I just, and we're just spending and spending and spending. Yeah. And spending and I'm, spending. I don't know if you heard today, but um, German Chancellor Merkel, mm-hmm. Angela um, Merkel, yeah, she um, she announced today that they they won't be doing another lo- round of lockdowns. Like, yeah, they were supposed to do some. I think over Easter, like five days, mm-hmm. like harsh lockdowns. And like she announced today that she apologized for the confusion, but that she recognized that's not what she meant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> but but there has been a change of course, and they're not yeah. doing it now. Well, they had real serious protests in well, Germany. Well, exactly, and that's what I'm aware of. And I, I think the same thing in France too, yeah, right? They've had um, real severe. They've had real severe protests across Europe. Europe, yeah. In response to the lockdowns. Oh yeah, um, and so yeah, I think maybe, everybody has had enough. They are fed up. Yeah, and I get it. Like I, yeah. like I don't so. understand why it's not happening here. Yeah. Well, at least in some areas, it, I think it, a lot of it has to do with like here in Alabama. I mean, we, well, it's yeah, not, we don't really have, yeah, we don't yeah. really have that problem. But I mean, there, there has been like California and some areas have locked down really hard. So mm-hmm. um, I think that I think the more this goes along, you're going to start seeing more of that. I don't understand it why it's taking so long. I don't understand either. I mean, there's got to be like there's OK. So there's a point where at the beginning when you didn't know. Yeah. And you're like, OK, well, this is I. Like I locked down, but not yeah. because I was told by the government, because I thought it was in my best interest to. Yeah. Um, and somewhere along the way, like if people who read, yeah. <laughs> you right. know, have to start to realize that it's not in their best interest to. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of people who it still is in their best interest. Like my mom should stay oh, yeah. locked away, yeah. but, um, but not me. Yeah. And not a twenty year old going to college or right. not going to college <laughs> yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no reason for it. And uh so at some point people start to to recognize that in their best interest is going out and earning some money. Yeah. Yeah. Um and going out and hanging out with friends and continuing, you know, their social life. Yeah. Uh it off is, of Zoom, <laughs> right? It like is kind of IRL <laughs> as the you know. It is kind of funny that these other countries are starting to have some real pushback, and we aren't here. And I was mm. kind of trying to think of what that might be, but like I was thinking, like maybe it's something to do with the media, media or something. But the media is the same way in Europe as it is here. Like it's, I, I just I don't know what could what the real reason. Uh, well, could be. okay, so I'm I'm actually starting to wonder about that. Yeah. So I mean, I do watch a lot of European media. Well, not a lot, but I, yeah. I watch European media. Um, and there, I, I, well, unfortunately I watch state media. So I watch like France yeah. 24, I watch some French BBC, 24. you know, these are all state, state controlled media, like actually state controlled media outlets, yeah. like explicitly state controlled media outlets. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that outside of that, that there might be more of a free press yeah, than what, in some of those countries than there is a, in the U S yeah. like people that are really reporting on okay. what's going on and not parroting the government line. Yeah. And I think that the mainstream media in the U S 
is essentially state run media. It is. I mean, it's, I, I would wholeheartedly agree with that. I mean, it's, they don't, it's like they, if ignore, you control the messaging well enough. Yeah. And maybe that's a lot of what it is because there's, there's a lot of people who, nobody really trusts the media, but we all still kind of watch it. Yeah. You know, now speak for yourself. Well, <laughs> I don't know about all that, but I don't. Yeah, I watch it, but like I say, I mean, I don't trust, and and a lot of people don't. But at the same time, when you hear the same things over and over again, yeah, it it is going to have an effect whether you realize it or not. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean, I think that the uh, the M five M in the U S um, just has uh, tighter control on the message yeah. than in um, Germany or France or maybe the U K. U K is going to be probably pretty close to us. Yeah. Um, in terms of, of uh, media control of the narrative. But, you know, there's plenty of outlets here, but... Yeah, they all kind of small. fall in line. Mm-hmm. Well, the, your big well, ones no, no, all no. fall I mean, in line. You talk yeah, about I mean small. alternative, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean alternative media, but um, yeah. they're all they're all small. But even yeah. Fox News is on board with, you know, oh, yeah. the with masks the... and the lockdowns and the, so on. Oh, yeah. I mean, they push back a little bit from time to time, but not much. But not, yeah, not like it, not like it needs to be. <laughs> yeah, um, and of course, MSNBC thinks that we're not locking down hard enough, and yeah, I don't know. Yeah, um, but that would be my that would be my guess as to why there's they're getting more they're having a harder time controlling the population in Europe is that there there are major media that are going against the government line. Yeah. Um, that they're not controlling the narrative as well from there. Which is sad. Like that's oh, yeah. supposed to be us. Like <laughs> like we're supposed to be that beacon and, and we're not. Yeah. So Well, I mean, uh, you know, and part of it too is that there are plenty of states that are open. Yeah. So you don't have the same kind of national that's uprising. True. Yeah. Um, but I would I would have expected to see more push back in places like Washington and California and yeah. and places that have locked down hard. Yeah. And I'm disappointed that I don't. Yeah. So I, if any I, of you listening to this podcast are in one of those places, like you need to organize. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's time. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, absolutely. Send me an email. I'll help as best I can. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I yeah. will. Um, I will express your message on the podcast for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, I don't know. I don't really have anything else. Uh, yeah, I didn't want to talk about the. You wanted to talk about gun control. I again. just wanted to kind of. Yeah, I don't know that I want to spend a bunch of time on it. But well, good because we don't have a bunch of time. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> um, but it's out there again. Of course, we had there was the two shootings the pat this past week the mm-hmm. the one in Colorado and the one in Atlanta. The one in Atlanta, I don't really know a whole lot about. But well, I don't know a lot about the one in Colorado. So yeah, the one in Colorado. Um, I mean. There's not uh, there's not a whole lot of details right now as far as motive is concerned, mm-hmm. but what we do know is, I mean, a guy went into a grocery store with an AR-15 and started shooting folks, um, and it's, I guess you could consider him a white guy. I don't know that I consider him a white guy. He's he's a uh, a Syrian. Okay. Yeah, he's a, he's a U.S. citizen, but mm-hmm. he's of Syrian yeah, descent. Descent, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so. That's not getting a whole lot of play in the media oh, right now. That doesn't really fit the narrative. Yeah, is he so, Muslim? I, I believe he is. Mm-hmm. I, I can't say that for solid, but I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure he's a Muslim. I did read some stuff about him today that um, some people that were they interviewed people that had known him and grown up with him and said that you know he was a really nice guy, but but he was a hothead. Mm-hmm. Like and, and he had he dealt with some paranoia issues. Like he was kind of paranoid. Okay. Always kind of thought people were watching him and things like that. Um, uh, so. Syrian in the U.S. They might have been. <laughs> Maybe they were. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? Well, the uh, the Atlanta shooting, I can tell you um, a little bit about. Um, the guy shot up a couple of massage parlors and um, and killed eight, uh, six of whom were Asian women. And yeah. so it's been portrayed as an Asian hate crime. But uh. the guy um, explicitly said that he um, that he shot up those places because of his sex addiction. And, uh, I mean, like essentially he was going out to kill the happy ending girls, um, <laughs> so, because so they were, wouldn't be tempting him. Yeah, exactly. Really? That's exactly it. <laughs> oh, so, wow. Yeah, Cause it was a temptation that he wanted to rid the world Ooh, of or God. whatever. Oh, that's, um, that's not good. <laughs> so anyway, the whole hate crime angle on this is made up. It's, yeah. it's a uh, totally a media narrative. Well, there does um, seem to be a media narrative though, pushing the, the hate crimes against, um, Asians and whatnot, because mm-hmm. that they had, 
I can never remember the guy's name. George Taki? Takiki? Uh, Takai, I think. Takai, yeah. Takai. Um, the he, Star Trek guy. Yeah, yeah. He was on um, one of the shows the other night, like, mm-hmm. talking it up about hate crimes and, like, you know, they were not wanting to yeah. prosecute these as hate crimes, and they clearly are, and <laughs> blah, 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 which all it did was get my blood boiling because I don't believe in hate crimes. <laughs> yeah, well, there's that, too. I mean, I, I thought crimes are absurd to... Yeah. Uh, I mean, the crime is what you did to somebody. The, the reasoning behind it doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, well, and the, the one in Atlanta, this is an excellent example of why there shouldn't be hate crimes anyway, because they're trying to apply uh, an idea to a guy who explicitly gave a different reason yeah well and and that <laughs> and that reason's probably um, i would say that reason's almost worse than if it was the reason yeah. that they're claiming it is like yeah the, the reason... he should just give us extra 50 bucks and enjoy his time yeah right <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it is. whatever it is <laughs> yeah so no it's it's that the hate crime thing really kind of gets under my skin just because yeah. it, it it's almost to say that one crime that the same crime can be worse because mm-hmm. it was because it was cre- done out of hate. Well, like, and I just I don't that that bothers me. Well, they're trying to to push it back to blaming Trump for all of this still yeah. because he called it the Chinese virus, which is stupid anyway. Yeah. Um, and the the truth is that Asians are like the least targeted ethnic group in the country. Yeah. Um, I think they're one of. The, I think that they may be the least involved in violent crime of any kind. Um, part of the reason is that, on the average, uh, they tend to be wealthier and tend to uh, so live in better neighborhoods. Yeah, um, is a big part of it. I think it's just a matter of circumstance. But um, also, in in terms of the the statistics that I was looking at, um, the thing that stood out the most to me is that the um, they had the the various ethnic groups, crime, you know, crimes, violent crimes against these ethnic groups and, and, um, then broken down by ethnic group who committed the crime. Yeah. Right. And, uh, so the thing that stood out to me is that, um, most white people who are victims of violent crimes, the, the perpetrator is also white. Most black people that are a victim of violent crimes, the perpetrator is also black. Yeah. Asian people is like an even split. Yeah, it was um, a little different. <laughs> yeah, it was like uh, roughly a quarter um, of the perpetrators were black, a quarter of the perpetrators were white, and a quarter of the perpetrators were um, were Asian. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> and then the other quarter was like random, random or yeah. indeterminate or, you know, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so that was the thing that stood out the most is that, yeah. that you know, it's not, it's not inter-ethnic. Yeah. Or wait, do I have that backward? It's not intra-ethnic oh i don't know don't ask me <laughs> it's not intra-ethnic violence it's inter-ethnic violence with them anyway yeah i think i had that right because intramural is like in your school yeah <laughs> um, international is between nations i don't know anyway. uh, anyway. some <laughs> some of these prefixes are confusing yeah. um but yeah that was the thing that stood out to me the most yeah. and then uh i um i heard a report that they had uh, two thousand percent increase in in violent crimes against Asians, um, but digging into it is based on some statistics from uh, some local area in New York, where the number of violent crimes against Asians had gone from one to twenty. Yeah, <laughs> and that was the two thousand percent increase. But that's still yeah. like a small number. Yeah, right. Um, so so uh, this is this is this is a way of creating a narrative that. You know, trying to invent a thing that's not there. Well, and on top of that, it, it's it's meant to divide us. It's oh, once yeah. again, it's it's the whole the strategy to divide mm-hmm. the nation, mm-hmm. and it's it's not healthy. No, it's, it's it's not good at all. It's to keep us fighting amongst each other so we don't look up at the people that are really causing the problems. Exactly. Like the adults in the room at the White House. <laughs> there you go, <laughs> the adults in the room. Uh, All right. Well, um, unless you got something else, we can go ahead and no, wrap I things think, up. I think I think we pretty well covered everything. All right. Uh, well, um, follow us everywhere. Yeah. Uh, Facebook. YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. Um, you can subscribe on YouTube, iTunes, or Podbean, yeah. and or yeah, yeah. Uh, like and share. Um, you know, we like feedback. Uh, I didn't see any entries in the. Um, better names for uh, 
<laughs> for government departments yeah. from the last podcast. Was that the last podcast? That was a couple of podcasts. Oh, was it? Well, I didn't yeah. see any entries anyway. Yeah. So you guys are lazy out there, not very creative. <laughs> um, so I, I would like to see better in the future. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, maybe we need you to get us started, Mike. That well, might... I already I did. <laughs> I, I named like three or four on the podcast. Fair enough. Yeah, that, was, that should have been, and some of them weren't even that good. I know that y'all can do better. <laughs> right. Um, and we'll be back in hopefully a week. You know how this week. goes. We're going to, we're going to claim to be back in a week and then we'll see. <laughs> yeah. um, so we'll just say it because that's the idea at least right now. Uh, although we're getting into a season where scheduling gets even harder somehow. Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> but uh, we plan to be back in a week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, time try and stay free life's short love free ciao later